we all have things that we strive for in life. And my biggest thing since I was 17 is I wanted to own a gym. There you go. And I forgot that dream uh, after a few years because I just saw how difficult it was. And, you know, after traveling and training with some of the best people in the world, I figured that I, I have to do this. I have to do this. It was something in my gut telling me I had to do it. And, you know, I'm seeing some success here and there. But it's a rough world, man. I paid out of pocket for this thing the whole time we had COVID. Wow. I didn't pay for myself. So I'm surprised that a lot of these gyms were able to stay around, and it's good. I, uh, some gym owners would push harm upon other gym owners. You know, they want their gyms to shut down. They're like, ha-ha, you know, I'm this. I've wanted these guys to flourish and stay open because they're the competition, you yeah. know, um, yeah. in, a certain, in a certain aspect. And another aspect, they're absolutely not the competition because we're all working to better people's lives. One thing I am is very patriotic, and I believe that uh, being a, a veteran of this country, I, the U.S. Army, I have seen a lot of different aspects and cultures and uh, different trains of thought and although i respect all of them because it's their right and their freedom to do so sure i there is a point in your life where you draw a line and you choose what your belief system is based on morals ethics values and uh intestinal fortitude yeah you know a yeah. lot of people will become sheep they follow um, because they're afraid to lead and they never were taught how to lead you know, yeah. just like people have a hard time learning, you have to learn how to learn. So being a coach, um, a teacher, you always try to find how your students learn and then teach them, coach them accordingly uh, on their learning curve. You you don't really alter the material. You just alter the approach of how you give that material out. So yeah. whether it's a combatives instruction or you're teaching somebody how to shoot a gun, I was a firearms instructor. Um, all the basics are always there. It's just the approach. So when it came to like the mandate for masks and things of that nature, there's not one gym in town that stopped operating. And a lot of people basically covered their windows and they chose to train people in private. They reduced the numbers that they trained, but you know, we're small businesses. We can't afford to float thousands of dollars every month. And, you know, a fun fact about this place, I built everything in here pretty much by myself. Um, I was a general contractor at the time. I would work about seven to five uh, in the afternoon. And then I would come, I would eat something or I'd grab a meal that I prepped and I would come here. And I would work about seven o'clock at night to about one in the morning. And I did that for about six and a half months straight. I have a little bit of thousand man hours into this place. Wow. Um, but this is why this gym looks like this. This is why uh, I was able to facilitate all this through help of other people by helping other people. And then when it came time that I needed a hand doing something, I had people on, on hand that would just chip in or do what they could. Yeah. Uh, you know, I spent you know, probably too much money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can't even count, like I can calculate it, but it's a pretty ugly number. Um, sure. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> regardless, regardless, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's not something that you're getting back right away. It's something yeah. that's an investment. So yeah. it's hard for people to look at this and say, Hey, this guy put 60 or 70,000 or a hundred thousand dollars into a business that produces, it just pays for itself. Right. So some people wouldn't call that success, but I look at it on the flip side and say, well, I know for a fact that I've brought people out of depression. I've helped people gain confidence. I've helped people get through rough times in, in, in relationships. Um, I've helped people cope with death, you know, of their loved ones, you know, and I've given people an opportunity as an outlet to release uh, the daily stressors of life. Yeah. I'm a believer that what you do in here is a direct reflection of what you do out there. 
So we have a sign on the wall that says the pain you feel today will be the strength that you feel tomorrow. And I'm an adamant believer that if I push these guys to almost their breaking point, but I raise them up, you know, with positivity and give them the opportunity to, to release all that stress, then I see a different person, even after yeah. a couple of weeks. It's hard for us. We're, 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 we're animals. We're pack animals. Yeah. You know, we want, we want, uh, you know, the Maslow's hierarchy needs. We want our, you know, we need food and we need shelter, but then there's relationships. We want love. We want reciprocation of, of uh, people's time. We want, we want communication. And with technology and people being glued to their phones all the time and people not having the ability to uh, uh, internalize what they're feeling, you know, well, it's a tough guy society. Everybody needs to be a tough guy. Well, sure. Not, the fact is, is that once you get really good at being violent, and violence is really not the option. It's you look for other opportunities to evade that. Yeah. Another saying that I absolutely live by and show people is that the highest level of martial arts is not resorting to physical violence to solve an altercation, but rather utilizing your mind and your presence, your energy to change the situation, to make it go down another path, to manipulate, if you would. There's yep. good manipulation and there's bad manipulation, but you manipulate in a good way. You know, it's like that saying a guy at a bar start, tries to start a fight and you buy him a beer instead, you know, yeah, that kind of mentality. So we don't start fights. We end fights. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, again, that pack mentality, you know, um, always, always being, always being, uh, kind and humble. And, uh, I have this thing, I always hashtag always forward. It was something I learned in the army. You know, you always draw a line in the sand and I'm never stepping backwards over that line. So I can only move forward and I can only draw, I can draw more lines for people, you know, but we all, we all have, we all have things that we strive for in life. And my biggest thing since I was 17 is I wanted to own a gym. There you go. And I forgot that dream uh, after a few years because I just saw how difficult it was. And, you know, after traveling and training with some of the best people in the world, I figured that I, I have to do this. I have to do this. It was something in my gut telling me I had to do it. And, you know, I'm seeing some success here and there, but it's a rough world. And I paid out of pocket for this thing the whole time we had COVID. Wow. I didn't pay for myself. So I'm surprised that a lot of these gyms were able to stay around and it's good. I, uh, some gym owners would wish harm upon other gym owners. You know, they want their gyms to shut down. They're like, ha you know, I'm this. I've wanted these guys to flourish and stay open because they're the competition, you yeah. know, um, yeah. in a certain, in a certain aspect and another aspect, they're absolutely not the competition because we're all working to better people's lives. So we're all in the same field, whether they respect what you do or you respect what they do is irrelevant because the fact is, is that people are getting in there. They are relieving stress. They are fighting their own battles. You know, mentally I've helped a lot of people with PTSD and, uh, a lot of now I'm helping people with you know issues with domestic violence. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really wanted to touch on was the laws changed in Washington State. They are no longer responding to domestic call, domestic violence calls. If you call in, let's say two couples are arguing, things are getting thrown around. You know, it's loud, crashing, bang, whatever, and you know that something's going to go down. Somebody calls the police. They put it out. They're not going to come out anymore until a crime is actually committed. So, yeah, that's huge. People don't yeah. realize the escalation of, of, of forces now. Now it's from one to five. Instead of being five, you know, you're going through the escalation of force. You have, you know, where, where it starts out, it might be a verbal or altercation, but all the stuff in between until five, until somebody's stabbed, shot, beat up, hurt, maimed, you know, they're not doing anything. So there's a failure on the system itself. And that brings me to why I'm on here. I uh, never, I've wanted to do an interview here. Yeah. But the thing is, is it's never been about me. So I didn't have a, a reason. Uh, to me, I have to have a purpose. So the purpose is um, August 14th from 12 to 4, 
p.m. We're doing an event uh, to raise awareness for domestic violence, which they are calling intimate partner violence right now. Um, they're kind of changing some terminology, but I just, you know, domestic violence is domestic violence. Any way we look at it, it's an ugly word and it doesn't, there's nothing that's ever good to, that comes from that sentence. Yeah. But the thing is that, you know, I know a gentleman, uh, his wife was killed or his ex was killed. His daughter was hurt severely. Um, I know uh, another girl that, you know, scar all the way across her head, you know, um, another girl broke her orbital socket, you know, and these guys, there's, you know, justice and karma and all that stuff, but this can be prevented. A lot of this can be prevented through um, outlets, having people train. Yep. You know, on the flip side, these people are going off and becoming violent because they don't know how to deal with their emotions. They don't know how to deal with their, their, um, their anger. So some people need to get out anger, but then on the flip side of that, the other people need to be safe too, right? These yep. people are potential victims. So my idea is to raise awareness in our community and set up uh, sponsorships for students and uh, set up sponsorships for for families that may not be able to afford these lessons um, and help them to have the ability to train gain some self-confidence and not go back into that a lot of times it's a repeat offense so maybe a guy and his wife or maybe you know a couple of girls whatever their case may be getting a fight well, they go back to their abuser because they have no other outlet they have no other other way to deal with that and they think that they did something wrong mm -hmm. or don't think that they're strong enough um, a lot of that's mental strength not physical strength right it's, it's drawing a line and saying you know what i'm not doing this anymore i'm going to do whatever i have to do to get out of this situation well this helps that not only by physically giving them uh, the ability to defend themselves but also uh, allowing them to gain uh, mental and emotional stability uh, it helps you process information. So that way, in an altercation, you're not react. It's not reactionary. It's an intelligent response. So right. I'm not, it's like somebody coming up and punching a guy that doesn't fight and they react kind of wild, right? Um, or you see guys fighting in the street and it's real wild. There's nothing calculated there. There's yeah. nothing. Uh, it's just a reactionary thing. So I'm trying to get people to uh, respond intelligently instead of react to a situation. Man. So it's, it's a long, long, lonely road. I spend yeah. hours upon hours grinding it out, trying to figure out what's the best, um, what's the best route to go with this. So what I've came up with is we're going to have a gourmet chef. Um, my, one of my good friends, Obi, he's going to be cooking some gourmet street tacos with an Asian fusion uh, kind of inspired uh, theme. So like bulgogi and maybe bami and like some other other things to because uh, we're a Muay Thai gym and MMA and martial arts, we want to mix a little east with west. Yeah, so we're gonna have gourmet street tacos and a couple good sides. We're gonna have some direct services on hand to help people that might need some information or somebody that knows somebody can at least get them some information to help out. Um, we're going to have like a 50 50 raffle. We're going to have some drawings and, you know, we're going to auction, auction off some gift basket stuff. Um, we're going to have uh, some kids' games. Oh, I'm adamant about kids. So we have to, uh, we'll have to have some kid games. And the most important thing is we have some keynote speakers. Um, I have a pretty good knowledge of domestic violence. I grew up in pretty rough situation. My mom had some mental health issues and uh, she was very violent. And so I grew up with that. And uh, my wife, uh, she experienced trauma um, with uh, her first, uh, with her the, the father of her daughter. Um, he was extremely abusive physically and mentally. And, uh, you know, she's very safe now. But yeah, uh, she's went through. She went through hell, and I. It still. It still affects our relationship, which I had nothing to do with that. So, sure. 
the the scars, although they're not external, they start to heal. They don't, they're not noticing them. They're still on the inside. Mm -hmm. And unless people can process those, there's no way that they're ever going to be suitable to have a, 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 as a good partner, you know, and that's not fair to them. They didn't, they didn't deserve that. So one of the things that I want to do is again, offer these sponsorships, sponsoring families, you know, I've been trying to work with many different businesses and, and I have a lot that are really is starting to pop off and it's really doing good. Um, you know, uh, LJ uh, Kennedy, uh, Keller Williams is a really cool guy. He's been very, very uh, forthcoming and helping me facilitate this. He's, gonna, he's the guy that has the barbecue. He shows up, just super great person. Um, you know, I have every one of my students is in on this. They're all wanting to help. They all want to put in on it. They all want to, they all want to see what we can do for our community. Because I'm a firm believer that a lot of people do things for themselves because it's convenient. It's not the, it's not, it's you, they see it as hard work and uh, they don't want to touch it. You know, yeah. it's like a big, big pile of dirt and you got one shovel and right. you have to move it. But if you got 30 guys on that, 30 shovels, it goes like that, right? So I, uh, I'm trying to just stay uh, focused and diligent and just treat it as a task and execute it with a relentless determination. I have, I have no ability to give up. I, I don't, I, I can't do it. There, there's just not an option there for me. Yep. Um, another one of my favorite sayings um, that the, uh, the weakest, the weakest people fight for themselves and the strongest people fight for others. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely am super excited for this event. I want to have ties within the community working like, for instance, I want to work with the YWCA. I want to work with some of these transition uh, housing and stuff, you know. Um, my wife is a care coordinator and she's heading up a, a, a program uh, that's going to be at the jail where that instead of people catching charges for drugs and substance abuse, just getting going to jail, doing time, getting out and repeating that offense, they're going to go in and be able to opt into a drug treatment facility and go through that path and find some healing and move on to the next yeah. part of life. Um, which is funny because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of information that correlates domestic violence with drug and alcohol use. You know, people yep. get a little tipsy and then they, they just go off, you know, they, right. uh, you know, they, they, that saying, you know, if you want to hear somebody tell the truth, you give them small call, you know, <laughs> and they, they become that, they become that person that has no filter. Yeah. Um, I can't do this alone. Yeah. I'm only one person, but I have a vision. I have a mission and I'm very mission oriented. So I've made the plan. I'm executing the plan right now, you know, and after, after that, after the event happens, you know, I expect really good things to happen. Um, we're going to have a bunch of games and stuff for the kids to play uh, at the event. You know, we'll be playing some music and stuff like that, you know, yeah. um, and uh, I'm going to be doing some demos, uh, different stuff, you know, I, uh, I, I I don't have any hair, so I was thinking maybe I put on a wig, you know, <laughs> pretend like I'm the girl, and I have some really big guys in here, you know, and yeah. show them. I actually have, I actually have some female students that are just amazing, nice. um, little little girls, you know, and they kick yeah. butt. They yeah. uh they do, they do really well, and you would be surprised, um, you know, that nobody's special, everybody's the same, and I always preach that. Yeah, when I'm on the bat, I don't hold myself above anybody. I tell them I'm here to share information. I want to give you the opportunity to learn that information. My job as a coach is to give that to you in the best manner that I can. And uh, it's been successful. Nice. So I planned some of my military training as an instructor. I utilize that teaching and that mindset to train my fighters and regular people as soldiers almost. But at the same time, it's sarcastic, laid back, good humor, having fun. Um, you know, there's everybody's a tough guy until they meet one, right? Right. You know, oh, yeah. 
all these girls in here are they they just become fearless. You see them gain confidence. You see them gain some structure in their life. You become like a life coach, a counselor almost. And I wasn't expecting that. And I didn't really want any part of that, to be honest with you. I kind of uh, shied away from it a little bit. I, I thought it was really about like just teaching people what to do. And then I realized that like it's teaching people how to have the confidence to attempt to do what you're teaching them. Mm. And if you get past that little speed bump, we'll try anything. Yep. I can show them the craziest stuff. And a lot of times they can execute it because the more relaxed they are in their environment, the more they absorb and the, the better the result. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are really adamant about getting their guys. Uh, they want their guys to fight right away. They want their guys to compete right away. I'm not like that. I don't ever pressure anybody to fight. You feel like you're ready? Let's let's try it out. Let's see what's going on. You know, yeah. let's train. But I, I'm all about being well prepared. So back to the event real quick. Um, yeah. I am looking for people to work with in the community. I work with, I, and it's non-discriminatory. I don't really care what their background is. I don't really care where they come from, you know. Um, it's more about if they are willing to help the community in any manner and they're willing to engage in um, any kind of support. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily monetary or anything like that. Um, it's more about working together as a team with a common goal because it, it just makes it a lot, uh, a lot faster for us. Yeah. Um, and that's what I want to do. You know, they change these laws and I expect there to be a lot of uh, bad stuff going on, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, and I've shared my story with you and, and I sent you the video there and, you know, and, and, you know, when I was 13, I had to beat up my mom's boyfriend for hitting her and I got kicked out of the house at that point, you know? So it was like, seriously, like, you know, at that point in my life, <laughs> you know, but it was all of things. What do you think, like, is the trigger that triggers men into doing that. And, you know, obviously domestic abuse goes both ways, the majority that we see, uh, you know, as men, but like, do you think it's something that their dad did to them or is this like, what is it that triggers men to, to think that that's okay? It's never okay. Right. Yeah. It's never okay. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way first. Yeah. Um, like, what do you, what do you think? Like, and this is just like, I'm just thinking like, you know, cause you and I have had some good conversations around this, but like, you know, absolutely. what is it in, in man that goes, Oh, I just got to beat her up and try to be this man. Like, what is it that triggers him? That's so weird to me. Um, you know, I've never been one. I've never, never had a woman. I never would. Yeah. Um, unless she puts gloves and a mouthpiece on. Right. And it's right. the Egypt. Sure, but the uh, the thing is, to me, I look at it from both perspectives. So yeah. not just men hitting women, but women hitting men. And what sure. what is the, the what is the catalyst that makes them snap? Yeah, I think it is the inability to internalize and express emotions. Our emotions are suppressed through social media constantly. Yeah. You're always told, as a kid, as a boy, you're always told it's not okay to be emotional. I'm not a very, I'm pretty stoic anyway, you know? So people think I always have this like straight, like thousand yard stare. And I do, but I'm, <laughs> I'm kind and, and nice to everybody. I totally. think that what happens is a lot of times they, an argument ensues. They get in a confrontation and they, they want answers. They want an answer for their problem. Their answer is inside of themselves. Their answer is in self-discipline. Their answer is in understanding what their partner is trying to say. The interpretation of information is really lost in a lot of ways. Again, I jump back onto the social media aspect of it because there's no emotion in texting. There is no emotion in typing up posts. Yep. Whatever your perception of that is, it could be funny to you, you could have a meme and, and you see it and you laugh at it. And, and then I look at it and I'm like, that's disgusting or that's horrible or whatever. Right. And it's all personal perspective. So I think it's part of them. I think that um, people that are taught to be real masculine, like, hey, don't cry, suck it up. You know, I think that's only for the mats. 
I think yeah. that's only when you're playing sports, you know? Yeah. Um, I tell kids in here, it directly relates to this. I tell kids in here, when they start to cry, I say, don't cry. You got to suck it up. You got to be tough right now. I need yeah. you to not cry. I need you to take a deep breath and focus. And you'll see the change in them. Uh, what happens is, is that, you know, a bully attacks them. A couple of kids attack him. You know, a kid walks up, punches another kid. If he cries, guess what? That kid's going to go and punch him some more. That kid's going to know that he's a target now, you know, an easy yep. target. Yep. And so I think it's the same way emotionally for guys and women um, and everybody else that when you get in that confrontation with somebody and you're not able to understand what's going on, you're reacting instead of responding yeah well a reaction to the reaction doesn't 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 work very well um i have to take my own timeouts too i'm not flawless i'm like every other human being I, you know uh i always give myself a break people don't do that it's okay to take a break it's okay to take five minutes and go cool down it's okay to just go take a walk for 15 minutes mm-hmm you know, you don't have to have that answer. People want th- that immediate need to solve a problem. Yep. That's one thing in the West that I see more than anything else than any other country is our immediate need for gratification. We want to learn, for instance, learning martial arts. They want to learn the technique. They want to learn it right now. They want to learn all the techniques right now, yeah. right? They don't want to have the regular car for transportation. They want the Lamborghini. That's their. That's what they want, you know? Yep. They, don't, they don't need a gun that operates okay, right? They need the best gun, right? And it's not, it's not like that. Um, a lot of other places, you know, it's a slow learning. If you take the ties, for instance, Muay Thai, you know, you're sitting there and kicking a bag over and over and over to gain muscle memory and conditioning. People have the, you know, no idea. You're, you're thousands and thousands of repetitions and they're not, it's not perfect. It's perfection over time. Yeah. Not in, so I think that's another thing in the West that happens with students um, and in relationships that people want an immediate gratification, immediate, they want their needs immediately met. And life doesn't work like that. Life is a process. Everything is a process. The idea wasn't to build this facility overnight. It took too many hours <laughs> yeah. and a, you know, a lot of time. And it's still not every, it, there's always work to be done, right? Sure. So. In, in the gym there's plenty of things i have to do so you as a person are like that too developmentally when you want to grow you need some uh, emotional or mental you know growth as you get older you get more mature you start to see things within yourself that you want to change habits uh character traits things of that nature so it takes work it's just yeah. daily on yourself and yeah. a lot of uh, there's not services available for that it's it's almost become embarrassing that you have to go to counseling Right. It's almost embarrassing that you need to ask for help. And that's the biggest thing. People are not asking for help. Yep. How do you help people that that you don't know need help? Yeah. You're not, you know, so I want more than anything to just get people involved. Yes. And that's what that sponsorship is about. It's like, hey, you know what? I got some anger issues. Our relationship isn't going so well. I need to just go beat up a bag. Or, hey, you know what? My, I'm scared. My boyfriend started yelling at me. You know, um, I love him still. I want to stay with him, but I need to feel a little bit more confident in myself. I need to be able to feel like I can defend myself if something does happen. Right. Um, I never want. I never want to hear another story about somebody getting seriously injured or dying because they didn't have the ability to defend themselves. Yeah. but it's the truth and it will happen yep. and it's it's a, it's a hard it's a it's one of the hardest truths that you can deal with because there's your hands are tied you're like this and there's nothing that you can do but i can utilize this gym as a catalyst for change and within our community i don't I'm not trying to make a bunch of money off of this. I'm not even really trying to make money off of this, to tell you the truth. I do this because it's my passion. It's yeah. a gym. It needs to run itself. But I, uh, I don't want it to become a job. I don't want it to be just work. I have fun here. And the 
value that I get out of helping other people allows me to have that fuel to keep going. It's, I find that when I help more people, I am automatically more successful in every aspect of my life. Yep. So I Absolutely. made a choice to say, you know what? I'm not chasing dollars. I'm not chasing dollars and try to replace my, my life for, you know, trying to exchange hours for dollars. I'm not trying to, to live my life like that. What I'm trying to do is help as many people as I can, because no, you know, we ne- nobody's making it out of here. You know, yeah. we're all going to push Daisy someday. Yep. We're all going to be deceased, but some people deserve to live a long life. And the only thing that, that, that might help them to do that is learning some self-defense, yep. learning how to protect themselves, learning how to protect their loved ones, learning how to protect other people. Let's say the student or oh, student of mine perhaps lives next to a, a, another person in an apartment building. Well, the cops aren't coming, you know? And something bad's going down. Um, my student might have the, the ability to intervene and help and stop an altercation. Um, that's, it's not about yourself. It's about other people. And if you always make it about other people, you're always right. You're always going to be, you're always going to be in green. You're always, you know, people get selfish. Again, immediate need, immediate gratification. We don't, we need less of that in this world. You know? yep. um, we're all about money and that's cool. Money's great, but it's just a tool. Yes, exactly. Money's cool. The most valuable commodity is time. And so there's time with your fa- family, time with your friends, time to, to do things that you're interested in, right? We always want to do all these things, but we never find the time. Yep. You know, it's just like good, important friendships. You make the time for them. Not, you don't do it when you just have time. You create time. You block out a window, like at 7 a.m. this morning, right? Bro, right. no. yeah. Um, I'm absolutely. <laughs> I just wanna. I just wanna help people, man. That's it. That's I. You know, it, the event is gonna be the event. I'm excited for it. I know that there's gonna be a lot of change going on, and anybody that can help sponsor us, I welcome them aboard. You know, if they're interested in actually helping people, yeah. You know, if they just want to get their name out there, if they're just about making themselves look good, I don't want to work with them. Right. I have no desire to work. I don't care how much money they have. I want people to help that want to help people, if that makes any sense. Totally, man. And just to reiterate, this event, August 14th, is from 12 to 4. It's at your gym there, right, in Spokane? Correct, yes. Stand up for Spokane is what you're calling it? That is correct. And what's the address there, just so folks can hear that on there? Uh, The address is 1403 North Green Street, number 3, in Spokane, Washington, 99202. Come on, man, dude, you and I, like we've had some just amazing conversations around fighting and the guys that you train with down in Brazil, like unbelievable, man. Like your story is so amazing. You're an absolute world changer for putting this event on, for putting this gym together, your mindset about helping people, man. Like, I love it, dude. And I've got some extra gear, top rated MMA gear. I'm going to drop it off to your gym, auction it off, man. Use it for that event. I also want to um, financially help you out with this event. So we'll talk offline. I want to be able to give you uh, some cash to help out, man, and sponsor some folks there, man. So we'll talk offline about that. But, man, I just want you to know that you have my full support in this. I love what you're doing. I think you're absolutely changing lives through your gym and through this event. And I'm looking forward to seeing your continued success and continued life changing through that, man. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it, too. I always an honor to work with you. I have yeah. All your, all your, your, your swag, all those really cool stickers and uh, stuff like that. And, uh, oh, it's, it's all over the gym. Every time you walk in, you can't, you can't not see your logo. Like I said, your banners right there, big old banner. Come on. Um, no, I like to do a quick walkthrough if you're cool with that. Uh, just going to yeah. show people where I'm Let's working. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Let me do this really quick. I don't know how well you can see stuff. Yeah. It looks good, man. I'll just walk like this. I'll show you. Got a nice boxing ring going on here. All these bags probably need to clean up a little bit more. All these pads, all this training equipment here. Uh, we're looking at about 2,500 square feet or so. Okay. Like training space. Right on. You know, just a lot of cool stuff. You know, I put my heart and soul into creating this environment. So everybody had an opportunity. Um, one of my biggest things, man, 
is everybody's welcome to come, not everybody's welcome to stay. The culture that we have in this gym, it's a learning environment and everybody is respected yes. straight across the board. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It only matters what you do in your future and what you do today. Yes. Yes, man. So good, dude. It's what I talk about all the time, man. Try to push that. Like your past does not define your future, man. You can make never. a change at any moment, man. Never. I love it. Never, never. Yeah, it's it's all about helping other people. Uh, so we have a hundred dollar sign up fee, and it's a hundred dollars a month for adults. Okay. Uh, yeah. it is an eighty dollar sign up fee and eighty dollars a month for kids. Uh, gotcha. Kids train three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. Adults train five days a week at 7 p.m. till about 9 p.m. So there's a lot of value. Uh, it works out to about four or five bucks a class, something like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, huge value. Dude. That's a- oh, yeah. We have multiple instructors. We uh, allow people to learn multiple disciplines. So I'm a crew in Muay Thai. I, uh, we train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, judo, uh, Dutch kickboxing, Dutch style Muay Thai, uh, Western boxing, you know, every aspect of combat is very important. And I believe in helping people uh, understand the full spectrum of combat as a whole. You know, you're not going to approach the same guy with the same technique. Everybody's style is going to be different. So what I do is I give people the tools to create their own style. Every, every fight is different. Every approach is different. You can see that from the highest levels of one FC, uh, the UFC, they don't always, you know, you got guys that are, are multiple world champions and they will approach a fight in a different manner based upon who they're engaging in combat with. Yep. So it's the same mindset. It's just a mindset and allowing people to uh, be comfortable enough to express that, yep. you know, yep. so no style of style. Right. Right. Absolutely, man. Well, how about I do this? I'm going to, I've got some shirts and I've got a couple of hats left over from top rate of May that I will give to you to, to Love auction it. off, man. Um, Absolutely. I, I will also, uh, financially give you $200 to cover someone's sponsorship, their sign up pay, their sign up fee in the first month, man. So I'll give you that as That's well awesome. to, to auction off, man. Absolutely. I'm honored. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank dude. You. Thank you to you. I really appreciate your time, man. Uh, dude, it's so such an honor to have you on, man. And, uh, appreciate you, you know, just being part of my team, man. And love it, dude. It's awesome. Always in your support, man. You're always, always in your support. Thank you so much for your What's time. What's going on? Thank you so much for watching the show. I really appreciate it. Hey, I just wanted to do a quick introduction. If you've not seen my show or you don't know the services that I offer, I wanted to drop them to you right now. One, I do voiceover work. So if you're looking for a voiceover a person to cover your motivational videos, or maybe it's Kickstarter videos or whatever it is, let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out there. I also work with brands on brand and product videos. So they'll send me their products to do reviews or box openings. Let me know. I'd love to work with you on your product as well and hope you get that product out there. I also love to be able to share my story. So if I can make an impact on one person at your next speaking engagement, let me know. I love to talk about my story. I love to talk about how our past does not define our future and morning routines and being consistent, how to be around those successful people that are just gonna lift you up. Let's chat about having me speak at your next event. Let's make it happen. Again, thank you so much for checking out this show. Check out ericallenmedia.com. Really appreciate your time. Have an awesome day.